shit. Look at this. Isn't that a bomb, man? I told you we were going to talk about snare drums. I don't know how I get my ass in these situations, but I should have turned the damn light on, but the crew did bring down a lot of snare drums. I, I love the crew for that. So we're going to be talking about, yeah, snare drums. As soon as I can get out of this damn mess. Listen, man, I just want to thank all my Facebook people, all the YouTubers, all the Space Monkeys, man, for all the wonderful shit you're sending in. Get me out of this damn mess so we can do the show. This is Adam Bomb. Damn, look at this, huh? Snare drums, man. I told you we were going to talk about snare drums. It looks like the crew went into the attic and dug out a lot of uh, my morsels that I've used over the years and years and years. Right here, this is a Joey Kramer Signature Series Ludwig uh, Black Nickel over brass. The actual shell is brass, and then he had his nickel put over it. It's got his his dragons laser etched in it. And this was a short-lived drum, but I had to have one because it's just as soon as I got mine, he switched to Pearl. But I still love him. So let's move on. So now we're talking brass. We'll go down here. We'll drop down in some years. This is a old Ludwig. I called it their Titanic version. It's called a slotted Coliseum. Blue and all of that. It's got the custom finish on it like I use on my drums. So I do use this. That's why the finishes are. But the slotted Coliseum, as you can see, I can stick my finger in there. It's actually two shells. And the reason I call it the Titanic is as soon as it came out, it was just, it was just a turd. You know, just a turd and a punch pole. Uh, sound wise, but I love it. So, you know, like I said, there's no such a bad, bad drum. And uh, what I mean by that is when it came out, it was such a cool idea with the slotted shell. And this one has a custom finish on it uh, to match my kids. Um, it's a blue and olive at it, but it has the slotted shells and they thought it would help for volume. And again, this is made out of maple and poplar where that's one of Ludwig's most famous shells. Everybody thinks it was uh, just maple, but it was maple, maple poplar which Ludwig did forever on their drum shells. They didn't make an all maple shell till I don't know when, but that would be a good troubleshooter question because I'd have to do my homework. So then let's scoot over here. Noble and Cooley. This is a very, very cool drum. Uh, and it's cast. Cast aluminum means it's, it's poured. You know, they didn't bend nothing. They made the shape and they actually poured this. And it, it, it's, it's, it's a beauty and it's made by Noble and Cooley. Uh, and then it's finished out in black. And then I have its sister right here. It's a Noble and Cooley. And this guy right here, this baby right there, is a solid maple. That's, I mean, that doesn't but maple. I'm telling you, just maple, maple, maple. And right below that is this white drum. You might be able to kind of see it through there. It's uh, made of uh, elderwood, which you may not know this. This is some trick. But the elderwood was used for... In the 50s and, and even back, I don't know how far back, but they made the famous precision bass on Elderwood. D-drum took it farther, cut a shell out of it. Oh, I love it. Not a real expensive drum, but the sound is platinum. In front of that is a solid. That black one up there, he's maple. As you can see, I do have a lot of maple because, I mean, that was kind of the drum as I was growing up into the era, well, that was the snare drum to have. But that, you know, that was made by a company called Solid, which was a short-lived company. Very customized drum. It's got a DW thrown off. Um, I got it from a very, very, very personal friend. That drum has actually been around the world a couple of times. The one below it is an inexpensive um, DW, but it is solid maple. I mean, it's, not, it's got the mag throw off. It is serious. It's a lacquer finish. And it's a maple drum. But then, and then Ludwig got real crazy. Over here in the corner, uh, that one right there, that's 25 plies of birch. And they call it the brick. Made in China or some shit. I don't know what Ludwig's doing. It's Ludwig. I love it. It's a killer drum. And there's another old Ludwig up in here, which uh, is a Super 400, their most collectible snare drum around, the brass ones. And I made the mistake. It is a Keystone badge, but it is metal. I thought it was brass. Didn't have my magnet with me to check the shell. You know, another little, little, little bomb tip. I always carry a magnet, put it on the shell. You'll find out what it is no matter what the guy at the store says. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, look at these. These three drums I brought out, just in particular, 
Because these three drums right here in front of me have been around the world. No bullshit. No bullshit. They belonged to a uh, very good friend of mine that I've known and had the luxury of playing drums with, jamming and stuff, and switching drums around. Uh, plays for Mr. John uh, Mellencamp. His name is Dane Clark. Dane, I love you. I, uh, I will never part with these drums, but I just wanted to show you uh, that I got them out of, uh, you know, like from his collection to mine, and he's got some of mine. But this one is a 7 by a 14 lacquer maple one piece, uh, noble and cooley brass lug, uh, die cast hoops signed to me by Dane. It is just a, one of my favorite drums of all to, to rock on, to jazz on, or whatever. And a solid, you know, it was a company that was short-lived, but Dane had one built, and he gave it to me, man. That's cool. And that drum right there, I've used in a lot of studio situations. Mwah! And again, I call this the little baby sister of this. It is a maple. It's, a, I believe it's a three and a half or a three. I, you know, I don't have my tape measure. But again, I just wanted to, uh, you know, just give a little shout out to my brother Dane, because that's how much these drums mean to me. And, uh... Like I said, they've been around the world. They mean a lot. I'll never get rid of them. I mean, I would let people play them and use them in the studio, man. You know, uh, Alan at the Static Shack has used them. Uh, Daryl up at Studio 9 has used them, and which is great. And that's what they're for. I want them being played, but I'll never part with them. So, again, man, this is Adam Baum, the drum troubleshooter. Uh, coming from you from a place beyond Pluto. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I don't lie. And I love you space books. I love the Facebooks. I love the YouTubers. I call you space monkeys. Not a mean term. That means I love you. And our first episode was a success because of you. And keep sending in all that stuff I need. I love you. Ah, yeah, this is my favorite time of the atom bomb drum troubleshooter dealy. This is Disarm the Bomb. This is something we're gonna do and have a blast doing it. So, let's just get right down to it and see what the old bomb has got for us today, huh? This shit comes from my favorite place. You know, it comes from space. Um, I'm not allowed to see it and the producers, they get it and then they put it in my kind of writing because I don't understand English. I talk it, but I don't walk it. So let's get right to it. It's a Google. Beluga, not Google. Shut up. All right. Okay. If you remember, last week we did this, and a young man, Jay Smith, wrote in about uh, how to tame a snare drum. I, I misread the question there, Mr. Smith, and I apologize, but I did hold up my end of the bargain the whole show. Oh, all my children, my orphans, all of them, all my snare drums. Uh, I mean, that's just the slice of this pie. I have, you know, oodles of snare drums. So, Mr. Smith, how to tame this snare drum? I'm sorry, but again, I, I you know, we were going to do the uh, snare drums. So, my suggestions are there's all kinds of ways. Um, one way is take an old drum head. This is the easiest way that's been broken and cut it around to just to fit inside of your snare drum and cut it maybe you know a ring about I don't know a half inch ring all the way around and just put that in your snare drum and hit it uh, and that will take a lot of the overtone a lot of the buzz that the young guys are trying to get out of um, now if you're talking about snare buzz like if you're hitting a tom and it, you uh, that is tuning and it seems to affect the smaller drum the smaller the drum the higher the pitch the more snare rattle and it's a thing that a, a good enough snout, sound man can EQ that out. So, you know, let it buzz. But to, just to tame it, there's one quick way. Taking the uh, old uh, head and cutting it into a piece. Another quick way is to take a piece of duct tape uh, and a Kleenex, fold it up, and tape it on the head. That should say, that's just a couple of quick ways, Jed. I got a bunch more here I got to get to. So, uh, this one is... Just says drum trivia. Okay. Uh, Johnny Gray, Facebook, writes, uh, who played drums on It's Only Rock and Roll 
but I like it. It's only rockin'. If that's, the, I believe that's a Rolling Stones song, if that's what we're talking about, then that would be Mr. Charlie Watts. Unless I'm, I don't think the Stones have ever had anybody but Charlie. That's a good question. I like to, I had to, I had to turn on the blinker, you know, connect. You don't understand, but I did. Very good question. Thank you. Final question comes from Facebook, Omar Adams. Does anybody know who that is? Who was the drummer on Elvis's last concert? Son of a bitch. What are you guys trying to do to me? I know I'm old on his last tour. Um, Tut. Ron Tut is my answer. I know he played with him. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. But I'm saying Ron Tut there, Mr. Omar. And if, if I'm wrong, well, we'll get you a T-shirt or a little coffee mug. Again, this is Adam Baum, the Drum Troubleshooter. Thank you very much for all those. We come from Facebook.